What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Empty the Clip Podcast. Today's topics are going to include overtraining, when to back off or deload, listening to your body, and athletes under-consuming for performance in youth sports. So, getting into it. Little life update. It's currently 12.01 a.m. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, my body is not doing super well. I have a little bit, I wouldn't call it an injury, but a nick in my knee. Uh, so the lower extremity injury at the moment, if you want to call it an injury, I would just call it a little nick dinged up. Um, something was unexpected. This week was supposed to be a big squat week, but that clearly did not happen uh, if I could barely bend my knee. There was no swelling, so I don't think there's any ligament damage. But the muscles in my hamstring and the calf muscle, um, the lateral head, so if you're looking at my body, this is the midline, laterally is going to be away from my body. So from like my chest to my left hand, so my left pectoral hand is lateral, so that lateral head on the outside is a little bit jacked up right now. It's, um, it's not hard to walk. I can bend, I have flexion, but when I do bend it to, per, uh, to a certain point, it hurts. So I did no heavy squatting. I did do some lunging, some Bulgarian split squats, some RDLs, side lunges, kind of, but not really full range of motion. Didn't want to mess anything up. Uh, and this leads me into, excuse me, the end of the week. I'm making adjustments. So you may be following a program or there's certain goals you want to hit for your training, whether it's for um, a competition, a certain type of sport, or maybe you just, you're just training because you want to pers have personal gain, personal PRs on like bench, deadlift, or squat. Uh, maybe it's Olympic lifting. But here's how I've made adjustments, and hopefully this can help you guys out. So this week, again, I'm supposed to do a lot of squatting. Clearly not possible with my calf every time I bend to a certain degree because I like to go um, as deep as possible into my squat. Uh, so this week has been pretty light on the legs, a little bit, a lot of movement, a lot of strengthening. The knee is feeling much better, but not 100% yet. Um, and then for my upper body, since my shoulders are healthy, thanks to Resilient Physio and Maddie Keese here in Bel Air, Maryland, I've been able to do a lot more pressing overhead, benching, accessory work to really grow my upper body, which is a main concern of mine going into the next CrossFit season along with my lower body strength, which honestly, uh, with the way I've been training, this is probably a good little deload for the rest of my muscles in my legs. So I'm happy to get that rest in. I'm turning this into a positive and not looking at all the negatives. I'm missing out on a retest week. Um, and we're just gonna have to keep rebuilding my legs. Clearly there is some protocol that I need to incorporate to this minor nick um, in my back of my knee doesn't happen again. So as an athlete assessing what is going right, what is going wrong, the first thing that's going wrong is I'm not sleeping enough. Um, the second thing is there's probably not enough lower body warm up and or the cool down is not enough for my body. Also, probably sitting too much at work. I need to be more mindful and get up and get moving and not let the grind take over my day. I think that's another thing I need to improve on as well. So those are going to be some things I focus on um, coming off this knee issue that we're correcting at the moment. Hopefully I can get everything resolved within the next week and get everything back on track. So for younger athletes, if you're you know accustomed to training a certain way, or even older athletes, if you're accustomed to training a certain way and you pick up an injury, say it's an upper body injury, you might need to train your lower body a little bit more. Now, with this, this doesn't mean you do legs every day, but you have to chunk it up. Maybe you do more of a quad focused day, and you do more of a hamstring focused day, and there's an abs or cardio on a bike. Still working out some parts of your upper body. If it's just one side you are able to work out, go for it. Um, if it's things you can work around, like if you're having a tricep issue but you can still do pulling, do some pulling. But I don't know how that's really going to affect that motion on the opposite side of your muscle. So that's up to you, doctors. Uh, more of a doctor's opinion, not maybe my opinion. Um, and then for athletes who may be training for a certain season, it's always better to get injured and get nicked up out of season. I couldn't imagine if this was happening before the cross that opened. This would be very bad or even before a competition. So I'm thankful for that. Um, but athletes that are injured in season, um, 
it's kind of a catch-22. Either you want to compete right now and maybe suffer some injuries down the line, long-term speaking, or in the short term, you toughen up and you get after it and you compete in the season anyways. Quick little story. I fractured my ankle junior year of high school. I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just a really bad sprain. Uh, making for all my high school athletes out there, guys and gals, going from sophomore year to junior year is a big deal in athletics. Most of you guys know this. It's for most of us because we're not all superstar athletes that make varsity as freshmen and or sophomores because um, we're not all freak athletes. But for most of us, making that jump from sophomore to junior year is the difference between JV, junior varsity, and the top varsity squad. So I was working my way up playing pickup soccer, getting in leagues in the Baltimore League, playing as much as I could, fracture my ankle during a game. I thought it was just a high ankle sprain, and I had to make a choice. Either I was going to sit out and potentially let somebody take my spot, which would have been, you know, me losing pretty much a full year of soccer because you probably would have rode the bench because there was a lot of good seniors and a lot of talent in the junior class that year. Um, and I had to make a decision, try to get healthy, uh, battled through a Fractured ankle the whole season. Got the starting job in the uh, end of the summer, beginning of the fall, when our soccer season started here in Maryland. Um, and I started and played every game. Um, long term, my ankle is not 100%. Even at a young age of 23, there's definitely some imbalances that I think have probably attributed to this current knee um, injury on my left knee, probably stemming from my left ankle a little bit. And ultimately, it probably goes from the ground up, probably something in my hip, to maybe it's the reason I have a little bit of a shoulder uh, issue as well. So it's something I'm going to get checked out, and we're going to figure that out in the near future. So I'll be ready for the 2022 season, fully healthy, fully ready to go. So that's the decision us athletes have to make because we only have a short window. High school, you get four years. College, you get four years. And if you get lucky, you get a little bit of extra time after that. So make the decision. Um, if you want to stay healthy and you want to protect your body more, go for it. If you want to ball out and play and take that risk, also go for it. But use common sense, take the right precautions, um, and compete when you can. So building off of that, athletes who don't eat enough. I think that it's not talked about enough. I don't think it's taught well in high school, and it's definitely not taught well enough in college. Um, I posted something on my Instagram. Today is... July the 10th, 2021. So if you look back in that last week, I posted something saying how athletes don't eat enough, and I had a guy comment and say, well, what's your evidence? So my evidence is that I've been playing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been playing competitive sports for 18 plus years. Um, and from the time when you were, you know, a little kid, and they would bring those juice pouches and cookies and snacks to after the game, which was not healthy for you, but as a kid, it really doesn't matter, to – um, watching what kids would eat in high school, full-on Chipotle sandwiches or, like, Chick-fil-A, KFC, Subway, stuff that's really, really not good for you, not fueling yourself the right way. I definitely would have changed that more in high school. I would have figured out a way to eat better. Um, it started in high school, but I really figured out what my body needed in college, and I would say my college teammates ate worse. And I think this is probably across the board a common theme. Um, in order for your body to perform at the highest level possible, you have to – fuel your body with the best fuels possible so it's very clean eating right now i'm currently eating the healthiest i've ever eaten i've put on the most muscle i have the most strength i'm the most vascular and aesthetically pleasing that i've ever been which is not really a goal it's kind of a byproduct and i'm trying to actually figure out a way to put on some more body fat because i feel like it's affecting my strength and i think that being too lean can really uh result in some injuries if you're trying to train strength, which is also why I think I may have this little nick on my body. Maybe it's a little bit more of a breakdown than I realize, which is something I hopefully I can fix. But for the majority of athletes, I really believe that we don't eat enough. Oh, excuse me. I needed some water. It's hot in the garage. Um, in soccer season, I would weigh myself for college in the beginning, and I would weigh, you know, 185 to 183, depending on whether or not I went to the bathroom that day or what have you. And by the end of the season, regardless, I would always be sub-180. I'd be honestly probably in the mid-170s, around a 175, 178. So while my body would break down, and this is definitely a result of me 
playing so much and not eating enough to support what was happening. But I also think I didn't do the right precautions and steps to maintain the muscle mass because I wasn't lifting as much. Um, so a lot of my guys on co- like at a college level would get hurt. And because we're in such – we're on a small Division three campus in Ashland, Virginia, playing for Randolph-Macon College, I can see what everyone's eating, and it was not good. Not good food, um, very poor nutritional intake, unfortunately, from what the cafeteria was feeding us. It's college food. It's hard to do. Um, but you can make some healthy choices. They're not the easy choices, but they are possible. So I always advocate for athletes to eat good whole foods, multiple meals spread out throughout the day. Excuse me again. But if you're somebody that does keto um, or you're uh, on a vegan diet, or even if you fast, there are workarounds, and it is possible to find an optimal type of diet that works best for you. Um, but I always advocate for my guys to, like, hold off on the crap sandwiches from the cafeteria, eat something lighter, uh, get some fruits in your body or some uh, more wholesome carbohydrates than the the mayonnaise ham and cheese sandwich that they would serve up. Um, And don't get like a bowl of ice cream and pour it over the green cheese. That's another thing. I think too many guys would just be like, well, if I'm not playing today, I'm going to eat like crap. Um, Not that that's affecting maybe the team as a whole, but it affects them, affects their mood. I think also what you eat can play a lot into your emotions. So if you don't feel good, you're probably not going to be as supportive or going as hard to get the team um, fired up and ready to play. Um, So the solution to this and for athletes is I think that there needs to be more education on nutrition. I think that all NCAA athletes should take a nutrition course um, or have, I don't know, somebody from the training staff maybe to – get them the education to understand like this is what you need to fuel or the school needs to make a um, some type of fund not fund they need to make some type of effort to get better nutrition and products i know with the small division three school there's only so much money but i would even like to see and i'm curious to research and dive into like a division one level of what's happening um, with the nutrition side like is that taken care of are the athletes doing a lot of that i guarantee if i look in like alabama football program or um uh uh, what's the really good men's soccer program it's not gonzaga oh shoot it's slipping my mind ah georgetown i guarantee you look at men's soccer georgetown they probably have all their meals partitioned out for them they probably may think they're literally probably just told eat now eat at this time eat all of that you'll be fine same thing probably goes for again Top, top division football teams, baseball teams, all that stuff at a division one level. But D3, I'd be interested to see what's the breakdown of nutrition and how it's passed on the athletes because I think you would see a lot less injuries, better performances, um, and overall the longevity of an athlete post-career, they would be healthier and they'd be happier individuals. So that is my two cents on the day. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Empty the Clip Podcast. I'm all out of energy for the week. And I'm ready to go to bed. So, if it's late at night, I hope you're ready to go to bed too. Because I'm quite tired. I'm ready for a little recharge. Hoping the knee gets healthy. Um, And I just want to say again, say thank you guys for tuning in. Much love. Peace.